Hi everyone, this is Mr. Sinti, and today I'm going to talk to you about the endomembrane system. And so I think this is going to be an interesting lesson because it talks about a lot of what the cell does and it solves a very important problem. Um, usually when students study something, like on this screen right here, you could see this sort of purple structure and these little green dots. Those little green dots are ribosomes and this purple structure is something called the endoplasmic reticulum. Usually when students study this, it's sort of like what does it do, what's going on, but I like to approach it a little bit different. I like to sort of bring up a problem that the cell has and that the endomembrane system which is comprised of the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, attempts to solve that problem. And I think it might make more sense if we go about it that way. So let's take a look at an ordinary cell like this. Here's the cell membrane or plasma membrane. And one of the things that we know about <clears throat> the plasma membrane is that it's a phospholipid bilayer and that there's proteins embedded in it. And those proteins that are embedded in it allow for facilitated diffusion of certain molecules. And let's just go over that real briefly. It's like the molecules that would need to go into the cell uh, through facilitated diffusion would be something like glucose because it's a, a fairly medium-sized polar molecule and it wouldn't go through the lipid bilayer. And so glucose travels through like this. Uh, things like amino acids, uh, building blocks of protein, very important. Now this would be like the blood out here that these things would be traveling in. Amino acids need to go through uh, proteins, even things that are small but electrically charged like ions, like sodium goes in, each with its own protein door because it's specific. Chlorine would need to go in like this. And so things that do not need to go in are small nonpolar, like oxygen goes through, water simply diffuses through osmosis, uh, carbon dioxide usually goes in this direction through passive diffusion. So what's my point? My point is when something's really large, like, like what? Like something like a protein itself. Now I've drawn this protein and this protein to be different sizes, but when a protein is traveling like this uh, outside of a cell, it's going to be too large to enter. It, it, it's too large to go through the bilayer, it's too large to go through a protein. And so I know what you're thinking, outside the cell, there are other proteins called enzymes, put a big E on it, that help speed up the hydrolysis of protein into, with water, into amino acids. And then those amino acids simply move into the cell this way. But what's curious, uh, and this is the problem which is leading uh, our discussion today, is you know inside the cell we've got this nucleus, okay? And inside the nucleus we have this DNA in here. And as you may recall from our previous discussion, this DNA produces RNA, which is a small little copy, and that goes out like this out of the nucleus to an already existing ribosome. Here's a ribosome. And what happens is the ribosome is the site of where proteins are going to be produced. And it's like that's important because the RNA contains the recipe on how to link the amino acids up in their appropriate sequence to construct the unique human protein. But once the protein is produced, how do you suppose it gets out outside of the cell to do its digestion, for example, or how, how does a cell, here's the big question, how does a cell secrete or export a large molecule like a protein? And it has to be intact because you can't disassemble it or else you wouldn't be able to reassemble it on the outside of the cell. So this is a major dilemma. How does it do it? How does the protein, here's a basic question, it's kind of funny, how does the protein cross the membrane? Well. If you're following this discussion, proteins don't cross the cell membrane, but they've got to because cells obviously secrete proteins. Uh, there's specialized cells and glands that secrete lots of enzymes and hormones. So how does the cell do it? And simply, 
we cut right to the chase. Simply what the cell needs to do is if it can enclose a protein in a membrane, what will happen is that vesicle, if you will, transport vesicle with the protein inside, if it can move along and fuse with the plasma membrane, when I say fuse, you know, these oil drops or oily phospholipids can touch each other and, and you kind of know what happens. If you've ever seen oil touch its, itself, it can form sort of like a little bubble like this and what will happen is anything inside, the contents inside, will be exported to the outside. And so the cell kind of cheats it a little bit by creating these transport vesicles that fuse with the plasma membrane they can export large molecules like protein from the cell. Likewise, when something large needs to be taken in, and I'll talk about this in, a, in, a, in a, another video, the similar thing happens is that um, the cell can reach out and grab something and it can enter in uh, in a process called en uh, endocytosis. This is a process called exocytosis. So, how does this lead into the uh, endomembrane system? It's like, well, something needs to package these proteins in membranes in order to secrete them. And so this is what our discussion is today, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go here, and let me bring up uh, the slide show again, and hopefully this will work. Let's see if we do this. We click on this. So here's a picture of, uh, whoops. Let's send that. Sorry about that. A little technical difficulty here. Let's see if we can get that to open up again. So um, let's move that along here to where we were. Sorry about that. Sorry about this delay. Let me come over here. Make that come up. No. Sorry again. Don't send. Let's try that one. Hopefully it'll work. Um, okay, so <laughs> sorry about that. So here, here is the um, <laughs> sorry. Here is the picture of the uh, endomembrane system that I was trying to to call up. Uh, it's not going to work. Um, let's see here. Maybe if I send it, it'll be better. Okay, maybe it'll forgive me. All right, come on, PowerPoint, don't bail me now. So let's see, let's go over here and slide down. I'm not sure why this isn't working, so I can't really fix it. Let's go, apologize for this. Let's try that one more time. All right, maybe I can cheat it, I'll just go like this. How's this? That's nice and large. Maybe it doesn't like it otherwise. So let's just go here, that's fine. So this is a, a membrane system called the endoplasmic reticulum, and these little green dots are ribosomes, and somehow they're going to be able to solve this problem that the cell has. And let's take a look. And so let's go here. And so the endomembrane system is a system of membranes, like it says, that's in the inside of the cell. So the cell itself, if I were to, to illustrate this, the cell itself is made up of an outer membrane and it has the nuclear membrane, but it's got all kinds of membrane inside. And so this is what we call the endo, meaning inside, membrane system. This is an actual picture. Here's the cell membrane right here. And what looks to be just like black lines and circles are a bunch of phospholipid bilayers that are forming this system and these little circles right here as you might have predicted are these little transport vesicles and just as you would have also predicted what's inside are little proteins and what's going to happen is that these membranes will fuse with the cell membrane and that's how you get a protein to leave the cell so let's go here <laughs> so I'm going to fight me here so this 
first organelle that I want to talk about is called the endoplasmic reticulum. It's kind of a cool word. It's actually kind of simple to, to, to explain. Endo means on the inside. Plasmic means fluid, so it's an in the fluid reticulum. So it's this reticulum is not a word that we often use, but it's sort of like a maze or a labyrinth, or like um, sort of like I don't know if you took stacks of of pita bread and sliced it in half, you'd create these little caverns inside these little cisterny. I don't know if you're familiar with the word, the, the term cistern which is like a storage of water. We actually have a cistern below the street on Vallejo Street just outside of our classroom. Um, at any rate, the endoplasmic reticulum is a series of membranes. So it's sort of like if you had a bed sheet made up of membrane, of phospholipids, and you sort of like flicked it and it formed like folds. That's what we're talking about. And these little tiny purple beads are the ribosomes. And if you remember, ribosomes are where proteins are made. So it really makes sense that something like this has to do with protein secretion. So this is a really incredible photograph of the transit, <coughs> excuse me, transit, transmission electron microscope. And so these little black dots are ribosomes. I'm just going to point something out here that Notice how ribosomes could be free in the cytoplasm, or they could be bound or attached, sort of like little, little beads or, or studs on a, on a coat or something. See how these ribosomes are attached on the membrane itself, on the endoplasmic reticulum? If ribosomes are free, like this, this means that when they produce a protein, let's make a color that's better contrast, so if they make a protein out here, then this protein is not for export because you're not going to be able to get that protein across the cell membrane. And that's fine. There's a lot of proteins that are needed by the cytoplasm. This could, if you're understanding what we were saying about the nuclear membrane, a protein could actually go into the nuclear uh, protein, uh, nuclear membrane because it can go through a nuclear pore. Because it's 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 uh, it, that allows for something large to pass through, but if a protein is produced on a bound ribosome, it's produced inside the endoplasmic reticulum. So it's, it goes on inside, and what's happening inside is let's go red. Inside here, a membrane is going to be placed around it like this, and so as it moves through these tunnels what's going to happen is that it's going to pinch off from the outside of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's called rough because it appears to be rough with all these ribosomes. The protein inside of it is then going to be able to bud off and it's going to be enclosed in a, uh, a vesicle. So let's take a look here what we got going on here. So there's two types of endoplasmic reticulum. Here's the nuclear membrane. There's one type of endoplasmic reticulum, as I mentioned a second ago, that has right here lots of ribosomes attached to it, and it's called rough because it appears to be rough, meaning you know, to the touch. And then there's another type called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. I'll mention the function a little bit later, but Essentially, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does many things. One of the things it does is that it's actually inside there is the place where lipids are produced. So triglycerides are produced there, phospholipids are produced there, and also some steroid hormones are produced inside the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So again, in more micrographs, transmission electron microscope, you can see rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here's a cartoon drawing of that. Notice the ribosomes on the outside of the membrane here and here, and then smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have any ribosomes. Again, if you are still confused, ribosomes on the outside over here, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And just to sort of drive this point home, Rough endoplasmic reticulum is particularly abundant, meaning that it's plentiful in cells that do a lot of this secreting. In other words, releasing proteins to the outside of the cell. And 
Now, how it does that is that when the protein is made on the inside of the endoplasmic reticulum tunnel, or this sort of labyrinth right in here, sometimes it's called the ER lumen, a lot of terms, but it's basically on the inside. When the protein buds off the endoplasmic reticulum, it's enclosed in a phospholipid bilayer. And so these vesicles are known as transport vesicles. And so these things can now exit the cell. And you're like, okay, here we go. We're just going to exit the cell right now. But the, pro this, the problem with this is it's sort of like if I can use this analogy, a lot of analogies, these are sort of like presents or packages that are underneath the Christmas tree. And they all have the same wrapping. They all have a membrane around them. And the this is a bit of a problem because not all the proteins that are enclosed in these vesicles are destined to leave the cell. Some of them are actually destined to go to other membrane-bound organelles because if you recall, if a protein needs to cross a membrane, it needs to be enclosed in a membrane itself. And so the problem is still not completely solved. There's going to be another organelle called the Golgi apparatus that actually takes these vesicles in and attaches sugars on the outside of the membrane as little markers or tags or little addresses so that we know who the packages are for or where they're supposed to go in this case. And so let's take a look here. Um, this is an actual photograph under the transmission microscope of rough endoplasmic reticulum. And so do you see these little circles that sort of just look like oil drops? Let's suppose that these are transport vesicles. These are membranes that have budded off from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And inside of them, let me go with a different color, there are proteins. And again, the point is that if the transport vesicle were to fuse with the cell membrane like that, you'd be able to export the you'd be able to export the protein to the outside of the cell. And so cells that do a lot of export have a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum. And it's like, okay, what's this? This is the nucleus. Here's a nuclear pore. How does the ribosome know how to make the protein? The RNA travels out there. And so when RNA leaves the nucleus, it goes to a ribosome to produce a protein. Let's actually take a look at that. Um, I'm a little video clip right here that sort of animates this. If you recall this from our discussion of the nucleus prior to this video, this is DNA. We're now in the nucleus. This is a special enzyme that makes copies of DNA into RNA. So this red strip is RNA. This is an enzyme called RNA polymerase, in case you're interested, and we'll talk about that later. Let's let that play, and let's see if I can animate it. So. Here the RNA is produced and it's now ready to leave the nucleus. And fortunately, the nuclear membrane has all these pores and so RNA can leave very easily. And there it is, leaving the nucleus. Now where is it going to go? It's going to look for ribosomes. Now ribosomes, like shown right here, are found all over in the cytoplasm. Those are the free ones. But they can also be attached to the big blue thing. This big blue thing is the endoplasmic reticulum. You're like, what is it? It's, it's membrane, but it's hollow inside, and these ribosomes are attached to the outside, giving it kind of a furry, rough appearance, as you can see. And so look at this. Here's the ribosome, and it's making this sort of fluorescent purple protein. And when that attaches to the outside, whoops, let me back that up a little bit. When that attaches to the outside of the endoplasmic reticulum, as you can see right there, it's going to produce its protein on the inside of the endoplasmic reticulum, like this. So this is, and now we're now inside the endoplasmic reticulum, and the proteins are being produced. So you can see through, it looks like water, but it's really a membrane. You can see through the ribosomes on the outside. So look at these proteins are being produced on the inside. What are we going to do with them? Well, the point is proteins are large. And because they're large, and if we want to secrete them from the cell, 
the rough endoplasmic reticulum has got to handle this. And so all these ribosomes are doing are making proteins. And when they go inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, that's where a membrane is going to be associated with it. And as, as you can see over here is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. That's where lipids are made. So let's go back inside the endoplasmic reticulum and see what's happening. There's some ribosomes passing by there. So now we're back inside the endoplasmic reticulum. The proteins are being made. There they are in purple. And so as they move through the tunnel of the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, they're going to move along, move along until they reach the end. And when they reach the end, they're going to bud off like this. And so these are all proteins. This is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And so as you can see here, this looks like a transport vesicle. Here's one, sort of like a lava lamp. You can imagine these things like the wax when it gets warm, budding off like that. Now what's interesting is, I mentioned before, they just can't leave because you can't tell um, one transport vesicle from another. So I'm going to like foreshadow what we're going to talk about by letting this video play out a little bit. So the transport vesicles don't leave just yet. They bump into another membrane organelle called the Golgi apparatus. Now apparatus isn't a word that we use a lot uh, these days, but it, it can be. It's a, it's a Golgi body, if you will, and Golgi is a, is a person's name. The Italian uh, cell biologist that first discovered it under the microscope. And so look at this. These transport vesicles fuse with the Golgi. And if you notice, there seems to be something pinching out from the Golgi. So these are like sort of transport vesicles come in and then transport vesicles go out. But what's the difference between these guys coming in and these guys coming out? Let me just cut to the chase here. See if I can animate the video. We'll see. The big difference is these transport vesicles, what the Golgi does is it attaches little tiny sugars. That's what this is. Little tiny sugars. And these are like the name tags. And this is on the outer part of the membrane. And so this sugar right here will tell the cell, hey, this guy is supposed to leave the cell. And this protein that's inside is supposed to go to another organelle within. Because out here, these don't have any sugars at all. And so let's see. Let me let that play out. So here's the transport vesicle fusing with the Golgi. And so now we're inside the Golgi. The proteins, what they're showing here, the proteins are further modified. And then they're budding out. And so it doesn't show the detail of that, but little oligosaccharides are being placed on the outside of the Golgi outside of this transport vesicle. And so now these things are good to go, if you will. They use these cables inside of protein called the cytoskeleton to sort of guide themselves on where they're going. And then notice, look at this one right here, when it fuses with the plasma membrane, that's a really cool image, it allows for something large, like a protein, to exit the cell. So I think that's, that's pretty effective. Let's go back over here. So that's what all this is right here, but this is the, what it really looks like. And so, as I mentioned before, one of the functions of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is that it's the place where lipids are produced. Um, seems like a detail, but it's rather important. Uh, it's where phospholipids are made, and steroids are produced, like for example, hormones. Um, the Golgi apparatus, which we just saw in the video, there's a cartoon drawing of it, has a place where it receives transport vesicle and a place where they exit. And the difference is when they exit, they're labeled with sugars for uh, so that they can be identified. And so what, this is an actual picture of the Golgi apparatus. And so these are, are some of these transport vesicles. Even our most powerful microscopes aren't going to be able to see the sugars on the outside. But basically, one side of the Golgi receives transport vesicles and the other side they butt off. And so here's a diagram of that and again this is a really nice photograph transmission electron micrograph showing the Golgi apparatus receiving and sort of like a post uh, post office it sort of receives a package that's covered like in cardboard and then an address is placed on it and then it's good to go.
something like that. And so transport vesicles that leave the Golgi apparatus in their final state are modified with little sugars called oligosaccharides that help them target where they're going. And so finally, in conclusion, what we have going here is nucleus releases messenger RNA, which goes to a ribosome, which makes a protein that is produced inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It buds off in a transport vesicle, fuses with the Golgi. The Golgi then labels the outside of the membrane with sugar, and then the vesicle is good to go. So I hope you enjoyed that actual brief discussion of the uh, endomembrane system. Thanks for watching.